So even Farina doesn't know the truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. It now seems that that person was you, hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? And then I became one with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the God of Justice. I beg your pardon? Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the Oratrice take down the God of Justice, it will also take down the Divine Throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate Indemnidium within the Oratrice. But really... Some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then, both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the Oratries. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydra Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. The destruction of that divine throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be... Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. <sighs> but... Oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. 
Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the Primordial Sea, and the Heavenly Principle stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. I, for my part, am the God of Justice, and is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the Primordial Sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. In other words, existence was Egeria's justice, and to me, justice is the continuation of that existence. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on, that should be the justice enthroned over all others. At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillet, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. The hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalet. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. Hereby declare 
people of La Fontaine, your sins are forgiven.